Introduction The Lean Startup, How Today's Entrepreneurs Use Continuous Innovation to Create Radically Successful Businesses, is a best-selling 2011 book by Eric Ries. Ries is an entrepreneur and advisor who has been pioneering the lean startup movement since the early 2000s. In the lean startup, Ries draws on his experiences, successes, and failures working in startups and large corporations to present a new methodology for entrepreneurship. He advocates that startups need to take a rigorous, evidence-based, scientific approach to creating successful businesses in conditions of extreme uncertainty. Rise presents concepts like validated learning, minimum viable products, MVPs, innovation accounting, actionable metrics, and build measure learn feedback loops as core components of the lean startup methodology. By rapidly testing hypotheses, getting customer feedback, and using data-driven decisions, startups can find product market fit faster. RISE provides a model to help entrepreneurs increase their odds of building sustainable, scalable, and impactful businesses. The Lean Startup has sparked a movement in the entrepreneurial and technology worlds by providing practical methodologies rooted in lean management and customer development principles. It has become the seminal book justifying agile, experimentation-driven innovation. Part 1. Vision Eric RISE introduces the concept of a lean startup, a company that operates with extreme efficiency by eliminating waste at every stage. He advocates adopting a scientific approach of developing hypotheses, rapid experimentation, and iteration based on customer feedback. Rise highlights that startups operate in conditions of extreme uncertainty. Traditional business plans rely too much on assumptions and projections instead of feedback. Startups need to take an evidence-based, scientific approach to understand if their vision resonates with customers. The build measure learn feedback loop is core to the lean methodology. Instead of releasing a fully built product, startups should release a minimum viable product, MVP, with just enough features to allow data collection about key business hypotheses. Customer behavior, not opinions, must drive priorities. Rise introduces the concept of innovation accounting to improve accountability and metrics in startups. Traditional accounting is unsuitable for the uncertainties of startups. Qualitative milestones like attaining product market fit provide better goals. Startups should focus on actionable metrics that tie to the key drivers of their business model. The concept of validated learning stresses the need for objective evidence to test hypotheses. Success is not determined by whether a product succeeds or fails in the market, but by if the startup collects useful learning to iterate quickly. This build measure learn loop should continue until product market fit. Rise notes that the Lean methodology promotes agile development with rapid iterations, flexibility, and listening to customers. However, it retains the rigorous accountability and metrics of traditional management. Lean startups practice exceptional discipline regarding their business model hypotheses. The startup's goal is to find a sustainable business model as fast as possible, not to scale or become profitable prematurely. Trying to scale before achieving product market fit will kill the company. Rapid iteration with customers takes priority. Rise closes by positioning Lean as a methodology to manage the risks of startups by accelerating learning. He emphasizes that this scientific approach is suited to extreme uncertainty and enables startups to maximize chances of success. A key goal of Lean startups is to shorten the product development cycle so they can build measure learn faster. Rise recommends techniques like small batch sizes, staging rollouts, and split testing features to accelerate this loop. An example is IMVU's approach. Instead of months-long release cycles, they started releasing new code in small batches multiple times a day. This increased deployment velocity allowed faster customer feedback and learning. Rise notes that Lean isn't just about spending less money. It is about rapid iteration aligned to the customer's actual needs, not the company's assumptions. Lean enables startups to do more, not less, test business models faster through scientific experimentation. Many startups fail not by lacking an initial vision, but by clinging to plans after reality invalidates their hypotheses. Pivoting requires being flexible to test new hypotheses when the evidence demands it. However, some vision is still needed to guide the search for a business model. Rise addresses common misconceptions like equating lean just with cost cutting or the MVP needing to be a minimal product. The MVP is not about low quality, but investing effort on the right things to maximize learning, not features. Another key process is identifying the engines of growth to best acquire and retain customers. Utilizing appropriate growth engines is vital to find product market fit and scale the business. Rise details viral, sticky, and paid growth models. 
An example is Dropbox referral program to incentivize viral growth to acquire more users. Identifying and investing in the right growth engine can significantly impact the startup's success. Rise positions continuous innovation as vital for startups to sustain growth after finding an initial fit. Lean methods enable startups to continue rapidly experimenting and learning from customers post product market fit. Adapting lean methods from manufacturing, Rise details processes like the five wise root cause analysis and Kaizen continuous improvement. These approaches systematically eliminate waste while responding to changing conditions. In conclusion, Rise argues the lean methodology enables startups to increase chances of success via evidence-based, scientific learning about their business model. The process of turning ideas into products should follow the build-measure-learn loop rather than long product development cycles with little customer feedback. Lean offers startups a methodology for managing extreme uncertainty and complexity. It provides both speed and discipline in pursuit of a sustainable business model. Part 2. Steer this section focuses on steering and testing startup hypotheses using innovation accounting and actionable metrics. RISE argues startups need better metrics than traditional accounting provides to assess if they are making progress. He presents the concept of actionable metrics, metrics tied to the drivers of the business model that empower teams to take action to influence them. Key is tracking actionable metrics like engagement, retention, or growth to steer towards product market fit. An example is Hulu using active usage metrics rather than revenue in their early stages. This aligned the team and prioritized enhancing engagement over short-term monetization. Rise advocates cohort analyses for clearer insight compared to cumulative totals. Studying user behavior cohorts over time highlights the impact of product changes and guides priority setting. He then covers techniques like funnel analysis to measure key conversions driving growth. Improving flow through sign-up, trial usage, Payments etc. can significantly impact acquisition, activation, and retention. Rise positions split testing features and ideas to steer product development as crucial for startups. This enables making decisions based on customer behavior rather than opinions or intuition. The overall emphasis is on rapidly testing hypotheses and ideas at every stage, then steering towards the versions that demonstrate traction by metrics aligned to the startup's mission. Rise coins the term pirate metrics for the core actionable metrics of acquisition, activation, retention, revenue, and referral. Optimizing these engines can drive growth. For example, he highlights the risk of over-optimizing for new signups without considering long-term engagement and retention. Balancing these metrics is vital. The book summarizes by stating startups need innovation accounting specific to their context of uncertainty, not traditional accounting rules. The emphasis should be on learning if their model could work and finding product market fit, not short-term profits. Actionable metrics that empower data-driven decisions are key to steering startups effectively. Here is an explanation of engagement, retention, and growth as actionable metrics and how they help guide startups towards product market fit. Engagement refers to metrics that measure how actively users are using the product. This includes metrics like session length, frequency of use, number of features used, etc. Tracking engagement helps determine if the product is providing value to users and meeting their needs. Increasing engagement signals you may be moving towards product market fit. Retention refers to metrics about users continuing to use the product over time, especially after onboarding. Analyzing retention by cohorts highlights if new features improve retention rates over specific time periods. Strong retention means the product provides enough ongoing value for users to return. Retention is a strong indicator a startup is progressing towards product market fit. Growth refers to metrics about how fast the startup is acquiring new users or customers. This includes drivers like viral factors, user referrals, conversion rates of paid marketing campaigns, etc. Sustainable user or revenue growth relies on engagement and retention, but optimizing growth is key to scaling. Signs of growth point to strong product potential and market traction. In summary, Analyzing and steering towards improvements in engagement, retention, and growth helps startups iterate to build products users truly want and need. The combination of these metrics indicates if product market fit is close. Startups steer towards the ideas and features that positively move these core metrics, validating they have product direction correct. Rise then expands on the concept of pivots, structured course corrections to test new business model hypotheses. He advises startups to recognize the need to pivot sooner based on insights from innovation accounting. Pivots demonstrate learning and evidence-based flexibility, not failure. 
Common types of pivots include changing product features, customer segments, sales channels, etc. Rise provides examples like Twitter's pivot from a podcasting to status updating platform. Importantly, pivots require keeping parts of their model that show promise, while changing other aspects. For example, keeping the overall customer need but changing the product approach or target segment. Rise notes effective pivots start from reality-based diagnoses, not panic or hope. They require analyzing issues, identifying root causes and testing potential solutions scientifically. Structured pivoting preserves value while testing improvements. Another vital methodology RISE covers is establishing baseline data to ensure reliable metrics. This provides trustworthy data to assess if new ideas are truly better. Without baselines, startups cannot validate if product changes move metrics. He uses the concept of minimum viable products to emphasize the risk of overbuilding products past the requirements of early testing. The goal of the MVP is not becoming a viable business itself, but testing hypotheses with minimal complexity. RISE closes by positioning that the lean process does not end after finding an initial product market fit. Startups then enter tuning, ongoing optimization and experimentation of the product, business model, and growth. Metrics continue steering evolution post-product market fit. In summary, Part 2 covers specific methodologies for startups to steer towards finding the right product and business model. This steering relies on innovation accounting and actionable metrics to accelerate evidence-based learning via scientific testing. The book emphasizes product market fit signals the first step in an ongoing process of data-driven optimization. Part 3, Accelerate. This part covers techniques lean startups utilize to accelerate the build-measure-learn feedback loop to speed up their learning. RISE emphasizes going faster allows more experiments and pivots, enabling startups to find product market fit faster. A core methodology recommended is splitting test ideas to validate what customers respond to without slow consensus-based debates. Testing controversial ideas to let data decide is faster than arguments. RISE advocates extensive prototyping early on to gather open-ended customer feedback. This accelerates learning before investing in a scaled MVP. Prototypes should focus on exploring potential needs, not presenting solutions. Another technique is utilizing concierge minimum viable products. Here a manual service MVP is offered to early customers before building a product. This tests if the solution solves a real customer need worth addressing. To accelerate development, RISE covers agile engineering practices like small batches, continuous deployment, and splitting features to deploy some parts earlier. The emphasis is on flexible response to learning. RISE then focuses on the right organizational structure and culture to enable rapid iteration. He advocates for an entrepreneurial culture that empowers teams to run experiments independently while staying aligned to the vision. Common acceleration techniques covered include innovation sandboxes where employees self-organize to prototype ideas, as well as internal hackathons to quickly test concepts. The focus is on accelerating learning through rapid experimentation. RISE argues that focusing on speed alone is insufficient. It must be combined with entrepreneurial management that drives towards valuable learning through evidence-based accountability. Leadership must reinforce disciplined experimentation aligned to the startup's mission. An important concept RISE introduces is that of leap of faith assumptions, untested hypotheses startups believe to be true. He recommends systematically identifying then testing assumptions early, not after releasing products. For example, he highlights products like the Segway which sunk costs into hardware before validating customer demand. Lean startups first test assumptions via MVPs and experiments before investing heavily in execution. RISE covers experimentation techniques like fake door smoke tests. Here startups advertise a non-existent product to gauge interest, validating demand before building it. This rapidly tests a key business hypothesis. Another methodology covered is utilizing landing page MVPs to break down complex products. By testing interest and conversions on key landing pages, startups can determine what to build first. RISE closes by focusing on internal startups or teams within large companies aiming to adopt lean methods. He covers strategies they can employ like creating autonomous teams insulated from existing processes while interacting with executives. The book concludes by reiterating that startups are not smaller versions of large companies. Embracing lean and its focus on accelerating build measure learn through flexible innovation is vital to improving startup success rates. RISE positions lean startup principles as being universally applicable to entrepreneurial projects as the environment demands speed, agility, and rigorous learning. 
whether in existing or new companies, he advocates adopting these evidence-based methodologies to innovate successfully. In summary, Part 3 offers a diverse set of techniques centered on strategically accelerating the rate of learning using scientific experimentation. Rise argues that embracing lean acceleration methods provides startups their best chance at finding product market fit before running out of resources.